After years of becoming a cultural phenomena as a video game, Five Nights at Freddy's is finally being turned into a movie. So let's talk about it. My name is Sean and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies and TV way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and consider clicking that subscribe button. As for me, I've never played Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know anything about the lore, but I also do know it's this massive phenomenon. Months back, my sister texted me asking if I could bring my, her son to the press screening with me because he's really excited about it. My own son is my counterpoint when it comes to video games in that he talks about Five Nights at Freddy's way too much and is driving everyone in our household crazy. So I was lucky enough to be able to take two different Five Nights at Freddy's mega fans to go see the film. The older of the two, my nephew's 18, he's read the books, and then my son is that middle school, super excited. He's never been more excited for a film than for this one. After I share my thoughts, I'll let you know what the two mega fans thought about it, as well as make a suggestion to parents as to whether they should or shouldn't allow their 11 year olds to see it like I did. That said, let's get started with the review. And I'll just cut right to the chase on this one. I went in primarily as a parent, hoping this would be a good entry level horror film for my son. I didn't want to be annoyed by it. I didn't want it to be grating. Hope that I could have a bit of fun with it. But, you know, I wasn't going primarily as a film for me to watch in and of itself. With that in mind, I, I thought it was good enough. It was enjoyable enough. Watching animatronic animals murder people, kind of entertaining and fun. It also has a little bit of uh, emotional ideas being explored in there and some lore to tickle the brain a little bit. It's not a particularly memorable film. It doesn't do anything to elevate it above the genre. And it's trying to walk this very narrow road with the when it comes to the tone and their target audience and very kind of heavy subject matter. And it doesn't always do the best job with it, but it worked well enough for me. I, I had enough fun with it. So let's kind of unpack each piece of that. And at its core, it's about this lore about these animatronic creatures that are murdering people because of something that has happened in the past. And when it's kind of doing the creepy bis business with them, it, it does a nice job of being creepy whenever you cut to these shots of these creatures and they're just eyes move or these little gestures it evokes the right response from you while also making you smile a little bit. It's it's creepy and quirky at the same time. And there's just a lot of really nice moments where it evokes the right emotion. You have several of these kill sequences where people are running around. And once again, you have the thrill <laughs> murder. I don't know if that's the best way to phrase that combined with just this odd nature to it of the context, the idea of, you know, there's always that been that joke about how Chuck E. Cheese is, has such a youthful innocence to it, but also an inherent creepiness. And that's, this movie, this franchise plays that out. What if you actually went with it and they were killing people? And so it, it really kind of nails those elements nicely. So that's kind of one half of the film. And I think where the movie gets itself in trouble is it doesn't, blend perfectly with the other half of the film, which is to say our lead character, Josh Hutcherson, is playing this guy with deep weight and guilt over childhood trauma. That like he is just broken because of what he saw and what he was unable to do at the time. And it's going back and forth between these two plots. Quirky, odd, possessed animatronics and very real personal human emotion. And they're two very different tones without much transition. It's just like quirky murder and depressing reality. <laughs> they're just side by side. You're like, oh, uh, okay. We're between them. And there's a side to it that you also appreciate that they're actually trying to put some substance and weight into of Five Nights at Freddy's movies. 
that has a character that has an actual emotional arc that has burdens that you you want to take the fantastical and anchor it in reality so you can feel it so the fantastic things feel more um exciting and thrilling because they're anchored to some reality you want to do that but you have to make it feel right and not like these scenes were directed by, by one person and these ones were directed by another person. And that's kind of the reigning problem with this film is the disconnect between the, the two halves. But it's it's not that, you know, Hutch, Hutcherson does a good job in the sequences. You feel for him. You care about the arc that he's having and what's kind of going on in his relationship with his sister. So it's done well. It just feels so different from the other scenes in the movie. Other thing to kind of talk about in here is that, of course, with Five Nights at Freddy's, there is a great deal of lore. And while not directly experiencing the lore, my son is on YouTube every day watching Five Nights at Freddy's lore videos, game theory, all of that stuff, um, diving into it and just constantly quoting facts to me that I don't know how to process as he's saying them, he even went in the purple shirt with the purple ties, oh, the purple suit guy. I, I don't know what that means, but so I, I have some knowledge of it. The, the whole movie is kind of soaked with little cameos and Easter eggs that I could tell when something was going on and my son would get excited and be like jiggling in his seat. He, he broke out at clapping multiple times and it, like no one else was clapping. He just starts clapping by himself. It was like, I don't think this is one of those movies. I don't I don't think that's the type of audience we're in right now. <laughs> um, but like, that's how excited my son was about all of these little things in it. And so I imagine fans will have very much an elevated experience because of all of that. And I could track with it a little bit better having heard enough from my son, but it, it feels like a movie that really is designed for the fans, both in there trying to capture the, the vibe of the games, but also that they're not fully explaining everything. They're not pausing to really unpack the lore. There's a little bit of let's do something that the fans will be like, oh, that, look at it, without explaining it to the new people. So in a certain sense, in that way, it's not the best on-ramp if you're not familiar with the material. Like it, you having a certain base of knowledge, even a basic knowledge of the lore helps understand kind of what's going on. And the final thing to talk about here, it was a lot of fun to see Matthew Lillard on screen. He, he doesn't have a ton of screen time, but he's just so fun when he is on screen. Gets a couple of real solid moments. He has such great comedic timing and such a an, an odd presence that fits perfectly into a movie like this that just kind of notches it up a little bit whenever he is around. As I mentioned at the beginning of this, I took my son who's a mega fan as well as my 18 year old nephew who has read the books and was very excited for it. Like I've been getting invited to press screenings for years. I believe this is the first time ever my sisters texted me like, hey, could you, could you take my son to this one? And so he's that level of a fan excitement for the film. And so what did he think about it? He said it was good, and in particular, it captured the world build. That was the phrase that he he said, world build, that you just have that sense of you're going into Five Nights at Freddy's, the atmosphere, the vibe, the tension. That's what it captures really nicely, like we're stepping into it. And so he had a good time with it, captured it well. He thinks that fans of Five Nights at Freddy's will have a good time with this movie because you're getting that Five Nights at Freddy's atmosphere, world, environment, character, lore that you want. The phrase he word he used was good, specifically good. Didn't really have any specific criticisms, but also didn't use hyperbolic praise for it, anything like that. But someone else did use some hyperbolic praise. That's my 11 year old son who is obsessed he said this. I loved it. It's my new favorite movie. It's a great representation of the games and books. If you're a FNAF fan, check it out. Of course, he's an 11 year old. He doesn't tend to be super critical of movies that he's excited to go see, but legitimately the whole movie, he was like wiggling in his seat, 
There, there was a point in time where there's a cameo in the movie and he just started bursting out clapping and I had to stop him because he was clapping so loud that I couldn't hear the, the jokes that were being said in the diner after a person showed up. And so, like, calm, calm down, man, calm down. <laughs> and, but he was legitimately, my middle school fan of this movie was bananas for it. And so those of you who have middle schoolers, or those of you who are a middle schooler, that are big Five Nights at Freddy's fans, my guy, it delivered everything that he hoped it would be. But just because he got what he wanted doesn't mean that it is an appropriate movie for him to see or that I was a good parent for taking him. So I don't at all regret taking my son to go see this film. Having known the basic subject matter, having seen the film with that in mind, it's, it's only a PG-13 movie. There are deaths in it but it's not gory at all. Like there's points in time where there's like someone will die and afterwards you'll see like a little blood streak on a door. Just enough to know that someone, as that signal of someone was injured here, but it's never gory. There's a lot of, there's a person standing there and something's moving at them really quick and they go, ah, and then it cuts away. But you're not watching gore. So it's that level of kind of tenseness to it. And the, the part of it that's just the heaviest is the basic premise and the idea of child abduction is very prominent. That's like building the whole character arc for Josh's character is, is child abduction. It's heavy stuff, but it's not gory. It's not explicit. There aren't like shots of a child curled up in a ball, chained up crying. So it's, it's all, it's in there as an idea that's heavy, but not put on display to really put an image in a child's head that can traumatize them or something like that. But every child is different. Every child has different thresholds for what ideas they latch onto, which ones trigger discomfort for them. And so I, I, I can't make a universal, this is good for all 11 year olds or anything like that. I would never do that, but I will say it's not gory and graphic. It's intense in the way the video games are intense and it's intense with the ideas. So if you've allowed your child to play the video games and experience that, the movie doesn't go like further with it. Real quick, before I give you my final recommendation, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about the film and give me that context. Are you a big fan of the games or are you someone just going in as a movie fan? Also, I've done several videos where I've ranked different uh, video game movies, the 20 highest grossing video game movies, as well as some follow-up shorts. You can check those out right up here if you wanna hear my thoughts on other video game movies. So my group had three different people with three different responses. The 11 year old thought it was the best movie that he's ever seen. The 18 year old said it was good and he thinks that Five Nights at Freddy's fans will like it. And me as the non-fan, I was like, that, that was good enough. It didn't make me obsessed with it or anything like that. Didn't wow me, but I was like, yeah, that, that was enjoyable enough for an hour and 45 minutes of my life. It amused me enough. I'm not sure that this is a movie that will play great for non-fans unless you have kids that they're super excited about it, but this is a movie the fans will enjoy. Overall, I'm gonna go B minus on the entertainment scale, 6.5 out of 10. And fans, see it in the theater, but only fans should see it in the theater. As for people that aren't familiar with the franchise, probably just wait to stream it. If you like this video, I've got more just like it. Check out one right over there that I think you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.